You're very fit and, you know, sporty. Don't do this, though. I've never done open water swimming, Why not? outdoor swimming. I don't know, it just feels too cold in this country. So but I think that's the point, I'm isn't it? I'm so with you. <laughs> so, open, the thing is, open, we call it open water swimming, right? And in this country, because the water's so cold, yeah. yeah. But when you go on holiday and you swim in the sea, out, you know, in a lovely warm country, yeah, that's, that's not open water swimming. No, that's just swimming, <laughs> that's just swimming in the warm sea. <laughs> well, researchers, you might be able to help there, you might take it on, because mm. researchers are looking for hundreds of people to take part in the first large study into whether open water swimming can reduce symptoms of depression. Yeah, that's because going for a dip outdoors has been praised as a way to improve well-being. Experts say there's emerging evidence that it can actually have a positive impact on mental health. So many people say, the people who do do it, mm. say it's like a complete tonic. And they, if, they're, if they're stopped from doing it, I suppose it's like if you stop from running or mm. doing exercise, you can really feel the difference. Yeah, and also just being outside. Although, and given we've talked a lot about this on the programme, uh, where is clean to swim? As yeah, well. that's something That's else we've spoken about. Carol's um, going to be one of those volunteers for open water swimming because she loves it, especially <laughs> with the weather she's showing us today. Good morning. Morning. Do you know what, Naga? What? I prefer gin with my tonic, actually. <laughs> 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 you and me both. <laughs> now, researchers... Listen up. Researchers are looking for hundreds of people to take part in the first large study into whether open water swimming can reduce symptoms of depression. You've not done open water swimming. Not done it. It's just too cold. <laughs> and also, at the moment, it feels a bit too polluted. It's the invigoration, though, isn't it? Mm. It's that... And, Look at this, and next to the swan. <laughs> exactly. Beauty, nature, <laughs> yeah. right? But also, I suppose, the challenge of thinking it's awful. You and I both think it's awful. And yeah. then accomplishing that overcoming, over, overcoming that yeah exactly so anyway it has been praised as a way of improving well-being experts say there is emerging evidence and they want more of this yeah. to show that it can have a positive impact on mental health i would I don't think that counts does it in a, in a lido 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 uh, i say lido you say lido tomato tomato but um I don't, like I don't think swimming. i don't well it's out in the air it's outside it's outside. Yeah, but but then it's not open water, it's like a body of water. Yeah but, yeah, but you wouldn't say it if... You wouldn't call open water swimming at a beach, I don't know, in the Mediterranean in the height of summer, would you? You'd just call it swimming in the sea. It depends if you go past the buoy. <laughs> <laughs> That's open water, <laughs> the safety net. Now, you would never throw Carol into some cold open water, would you? There's plenty of cold open water around right now. And there's, there's enough of Carol, there's yeah. one. So, Morning. you know, we have options. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> we'll just quickly move on. <laughs> Thank you, Naga. Uh, <laughs> Canary Wharf has teamed up with Guide Dogs for the Blind to open a brand new inclusive art trail entitled Paws on the Wharf. The trail, which opens across Canary Wharf today, is made up of 25 guide dog sculptures, each designed by a different artist, including some with sight loss. The aim is to celebrate the extraordinary bond between guide dogs and their owners. One of the one things that you can't do when you go into a gallery or a museum is actually get hands on with the sculptures and that's the whole principle behind it so it's bringing a whole new concept to, to those that have uh, visual impairment. Um, let's have a look at the front of today's newspapers for you and the Telegraph leads on ministers preparing to put an end to court hearings held behind closed doors. The paper reports up to 40,000 cases a month are decided in private often by a single magistrate and the Justice Secretary wants to open this procedure up to more scrutiny. The Guardian's looking at the criticism faced by water companies in England after data revealed raw sewage was discharged for more than 3.6 million hours into rivers and seas last year. Rowers taking part in the Oxford-Cambridge boat race this Saturday have been told not to go in the water because of high levels of E. coli in the River Thames. And the Daily Mail questions whether we can expect a summer election. The paper says the Prime Minister's aides are urging him to hold a general election as early as June over fears that Tory rebels could lodge a no-confidence vote against him. Uh, now, usually saved for Easter Sunday only, uh, but animals at a zoo in Germany have already polished off their eggs this year. Did they get chocolate <laughs> eggs? No. No, they got edible, edible really? eggs for bears, using, which were made with flour and water. I mean, I hope they're edible anyway. <laughs> and then the egg and flour eggs were filled with fruit, vegetables and nuts. Huh. Monkeys, the dwarf mongoose, they were treated to chicken eggs that had been painted before being hidden around their habitats for them <laughs> to find. It doesn't look like he's enjoying that very much. Yeah, actually, no, he doesn't, <laughs> does he?
<laughs> that is not a sign of a happy mongoose. I think when you do eggs like that, I think that the carers of the animals find more fun doing oh, yeah. that than yeah. the, actually the animals. Do you think they go, it's Easter, where's my Easter egg? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's my painted Easter egg? How comes it's not painted beautifully? Flower, egg. Yeah. Um, are you a scaredy cat when it comes to ghost stories or ghost no. films? Really? I, I mean, I like a horror film or a go like a scary film, but, but yeah. I'm to... such a scaredy cat. Really? But I think there's... Well, I've, I've come up with this reason. So, honestly, if I watched a... If I, if I heard a ghost story or watched a scary film, mm. I wouldn't go to the bathroom on my own. For really? Like day. Yeah, at night, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd be really scared. So... There is this thing, right, called um, aphantasia. Aphantasia. Mm. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, so it's a condition... It's not a condition as in uh, seen as uh, it detracts from anyone's ability to do anything, but what it means is... So one in five people have this, where they can't create or visualise images in their mind's eye. OK. Right? So take that. So and so that's fine it's it, and so the disadvantage it is, is you could find it more difficult to remember key moments visually mm. right but the advantage is that people are less likely to be frightened by scary stories let me explain because they can't visualize this they um they don't kind of see an image and then it grows and grows and grows so if you're describing a scary story they can't see it so right. they hear the story okay. but they haven't got the added Trauma in my and then case. it doesn't make it a, a exactly. real exactly, and in their it head. doesn't make it big. So you haven't imagined it. So you you wouldn't then go to sleep, like I would, and see it. Do you think that works in other walks of life though, as well? Because people can catastrophize, can't they? They hear something and then imagine it's going to be so. so much this more work. there is something called hyperphantasia, um, which people have. This is the op opposite experience, and that's a vivid imagination. Right. So you have to kind of just be careful with certain certain people um, because. Some like children, for example, we tend to play and imagine. Some just can't imagine the pictures in their in their minds. But if, if, but if someone is scared by scary stories, be more sympathetic because it's just because they have a very good imagination. It was a very long way of me saying I need to be nicer to you. Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> At last, the penny's <laughs> dropping. Visualise the penny dropping. <laughs>